and it's time for semester one word study lesson two. We have two bases in this one. In the last word study we had duck and duct. Here we have voke and claim. Now today's lesson includes roots or base words that we'll talk about a lot today. Those are in all capital letters, prefixes that come before the root word, and suffixes which come after the root word. Now we had duck or duct before we talked which meant to lead as in words like conduct or induce. We have mal which always means bad, maleficent, great example, or a bad example which depending on whatever way you want to look at it. We have bene which means good, like you give your dog beneful dog food. You like to have benefits when you're working. And we have fill like the uh, philanthropic kind of people who are always doing nice things for others. Phil means to love. And finally we have verb, which means actually word. You know what I mean. So we just talked about those roots. And do you remember aqua means water, via means way or road, like a viaduct. Shun means the act of and as a suffix. Re and sub as prefixes mean again, like to rethink something, or sub means under or secretly, like subterfuge or submarine. Hip means horse, and potamus means river, if you recall that example from our last unit. Okay, if you'll hit the pause button and go back to Blended Schools and download the Word Study Lesson 2 practice notes, if you haven't already done so, then that would be great. When you hook up with play again, then I will give you the spelling test. Okay, so on the left hand side, you are trying out the spelling the best you can as I read the words to you, and then you're going to check your spelling. Later on, you'll come back to this side so that you can write down basic definitions from the PowerPoint. Are you ready? Okay, number one, see if you can spell the word claimant. Claimant. The claimant in the case was the defendant. Number two is clamor. There was so much clamor and noise at the birthday party that I could barely understand anyone speaking to me. Clamor. Declaim is the next word. Declaim. Number four is disclaim. Disclaim. Number five, we're going to go a little different route. Number five is evocative. That music was evocative of a Mozart or a Bach. Evocative. Number six is invoke. He invoked the name of the princess. Invoke. Number seven is to reclaim. Reclaim. Number eight is revoke. If you do break the law, you may have your license revoked. Revoke. And it doesn't really matter if you put endings on them right now or not. Number nine, vocation. Your vocation is your job. Your avocation is your hobby. But the word now is vocation. And the last word, number ten, is vouch. You have good character, so I will vouch for you. Vouch. Okay, go ahead and hit the pause button for a moment. Let's check your spelling words. So looking at the spelling words in front of you, go ahead and check your work on your practice spelling test. You will not be quizzed on the spelling of these words, only the meanings and definitions. Going back to this part of your note-taking sheet, what I'd like you to do is go over to the PowerPoint and let me take you over there right now. Well, this won't let me hang on. Okay, there you go. So now you'll be able to transfer the information over to the little chart or table on your notes. You have this group, which you can hit the pause button until you get this done, and you also have this group. Okay, so hit the pause button, flip back and forth as you need to. And uh, when you get that completed, check back in here for this. I'm going to go through each of these slides. You have a place to write the definitions on your front sheet of your practice notes 
So you can flip back and forth as you need to and hit the pause button as you need to. So our first root is clam or claim, and you can see it comes from the Latin clamare, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Proclaim and exclaim include this base, this root word. So to proclaim something is to call it out officially and publicly, as in the picture. To exclaim is to cry out from surprise or emotion. We also have words that we'll look at, such as claimant, clamor, declaim, disclaim, and reclaim. Our other root for today is voc or voc, another Latin one that comes from vocare, to call. Now, convoke is to call together or assemble a group. Irrevocable means something that cannot be called back. So you can kind of see the word revoke in irrevocable. And we're also going to look at words like evocative, invoke, revoke, vocation, and vouch. Now, claimant, again, is the first word. So that's one who makes a claim or asks for something that he or she believes rightfully belongs to him or her. So claim and claimable. You can imagine insurance agents use this a lot. Okay, so if you need to, go back to the practice note sheet and put the definition down. Clamor. A loud, continuous noise, a strong expression of discontent or protest, or public outcry. And you can see it can also be used as a verb. If you clamor for someone's attention, your puppy or kitten might clamor for your attention, or a toddler might clamor for your attention. To declaim, that means to speak loudly and forcefully or to deliver a formal speech. We don't hear this word a lot, but it is occasionally used. A declamation or being declamatory also is related to these words. To disclaim, to deny or give up any claim to or connection with, to disown. So another, you might know the word disown. Disclaim means the same thing. Or to reject as untrue. A disclaimer, which is why we're studying this, is seen frequently on, on TV commercials about medicines. You know, they'll say, oh, this medicine will do this. And then the disclaimer is, but it may cause this, this, and this. Evocative means you, makes you think of something. Or you can create a new, a new memory through the power of memory or imagination. There can be an evocative poem. It kind of calls out to you. We have to invoke to call upon for insistence, support, or inspiration to use or apply. And sometimes we've heard the word an invocation. Please give the invocation before the dinner. Reclaim, to ask someone to give you something back. So I loaned you my pencil. May I reclaim it? I want to recover it. To reclaim also means to make something better. So reclaimed land, a reclaimed house. Um, reclaimable and reclamation are also related words. To revoke. Look at that. License revoked. That's not good. To cancel or make void by reversing, recalling, or withdrawing. So if you give your word and then you revoke your word, you're taking it back. Revo revocable and revocation are related words. Don't forget that re means back or again. Vocation. Now this is an occupation, your job, a profession, especially one you've been trained for. A vocation can also be just a strong desire to do a certain kind of work, like a calling. Especially it's used when you're talking about a religious nature, but it can be used in other ways too. Now vocational uh, means pertaining to or having the conditions of a job. So there are vocational schools where one might live a learn a specific trade or occupation, such as welding, cooking, nursing. And that's an opportunity that you will have in high school uh, when you're in 10th, 11th, or 12th grade. A vocational school means that you go to a different, a different school to learn more trade-like occupations. Vouch. That gives you gives someone else your personal assurance or furnishing or serving as a guarantee or supplying supporting evidence. You can say, I vouch for this person, I know this person. Um, or you can give even someone a voucher. A voucher would be a piece of paper that promises that you will do something.
I appreciate you coming here to personally vouch for him, but we still need to see a doctor's note. Uh-oh. Okay. So again, we have our prefixes and suffix that we do want to take note of. We'll continue to see these again and again. Re means to go back or again, so to rethink, to reorganize. X as in exit, um, to be an ex of something, an, an ex-military person means that you're out of it now. Just the same word that exit means out. In just means in. And uh, in can also mean not in certain occasions. And then dis also can mean not. So you're going to go back to the paper and complete the practices. And then you have a Quizlet and you have a blended schools practice as well. I'm going to take you right over to those so that you can see those. So what you've completed, you've done the lesson two spelling practice along this part. You have gone back to each of the slides so that you can take some notes or write some basic definitions down. You have gone through the PowerPoint presentation to complete this part. And also, now it's your turn to work on the actual exercises. So using the vocabulary list from the PowerPoint, or right above on your first page of your practice sheet, write the word that best fits each definition. Try to make an effort to spell each word correctly as you write them down here. And you'll see again that you have the definitions here. So you not only have them here in your words, but you also have them here to help you prepare and study for these words. Here you're looking to see if you've used the word correctly or not. So true or false. Um, some of these words use different word endings just to get you used to using them. You have to know the definition to know if it's being used correctly or not. Here we have multiple choice, which best expresses the meaning of the italicized word or phrase in the sentence. And here we have a part that is typically very hard for people figuring out what ending could possibly go on this word. So we do have some endings that are listed there for you. This should help you, so please pay attention to this part. And just do your best on this to try to write the correct form of the word, and we'll see how you do. You can use this page to give yourself a practice test if you'd like. Um, as I mentioned, there's also plenty of practices that you can do over and over and over again on both the Quizlet and on the Blended Schools quiz. Now, we will have the homework due um, soon. And please check the board so that you can get the date for that. And then we'll be having a vocabulary quiz on this second unit in the quarter. Thank you so much.